Hey friends, welcome to another real life, life lift lesson. And today I'm going to get real, real and uh, be vulnerable for the sake of freedom. So friends, you won't want to miss these moments. This has been a very big transition. Uh, I just got home. It's just about 11, 15 p.m. here on December 5th of 2023. And this video is going to be titled, Reliving Trauma, The NICU Nightmare. You may have asked this question in your life, in your lifetime, in your journey of life. God, why do you allow the repeat of an experience that was ultra traumatic? Maybe you've had something happen to you and down the road you have the same experience again and it leaves you devastated, it leaves you reeling, it leaves you feeling emotionally exhausted. Have you been there? Have you wondered why? God, why again? Why again? Well, friends, you're in light company. And I'm sharing this experience purely for the sake to hopefully unlock freedom in your heart, mind, and spirit to realize the purpose of the trauma and why. Why would God allow it? Why? Friends, I'm discovering that Jesus loves us so much that he does not want us to stay stuck in the past. He doesn't want us reliving yesterday and letting it color every, every aspect of our life. He loves us way too much to leave us stuck. And I've found this over and over, friends, with the different experiences that I've had. He allows things to happen, and I sometimes wonder why. Like, I feel super vulnerable and weak and unfit to face the moment, to be frank. However, going through it, I find a new freedom, a new peace, and a new healing because I'm turning to him and I'm looking to him in it, friends. This is the key that sets us free. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's the truth of his presence, friends. It's knowing that he is with us, even when I feel abandoned, even when I feel vulnerable, even when I feel just totally, totally zapped and unfit. He is there, friends. His presence is the anchor for our souls that we desperately need, especially in trauma, friends, especially in trauma. As many of you well know, I lived over a year in three different NICUs in two different states. Well over 365 days, it was closer to 400 and something days. And there was a lot of traumatic moments in Emery and Mercy's lives. And that was a very, ooh, very, very excruciating journey. And so much happened in that time frame, And it was so unrelenting and so long. When trauma drags out and chaos, where do you turn? And now, my little beautiful baby boy, not little, <laughs> my big boy Ben, has arrived uh, just, just yesterday. It seems like forever ago because there's so much that's happened. But he arrived uh, December 4th at uh, 2, I believe it's 2.13 p.m. And uh, he made his glorious entrance to planet Earth. And I noticed he wasn't breathing exceptionally well. He's a 37-week, beautiful baby boy, over 8 pounds, uh, very, very strong. But I noticed his breathing was off. The respiratory therapist was on it. And uh, it seemed to progress. 45 minutes into his life, he was still having this grunting noise. So his lungs were not transitioning. And I just had a feeling we're going back to the NICU. I'm going to the NICU again. And I was anxious. I didn't want it to happen, but I wanted whatever would be best for my son. And I ended up 
having to leave my dear wife as she had a she had a great labor and delivery but the after journey was really tough lost a lot of blood vomiting fever she was not in good shape it was really hard i felt really torn but went with my baby boy to a place that i never cared to go back to the nicu and there here in colorado springs st francis uh hospital st francis medical center incredible people incredible humans so compassionate i love catholic hospitals they really do have a way of of helping really spread the compassion of Jesus. And walking through those doors, I felt so weak, friends. I felt so out of place. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this again. But love is what compelled me. I wanted the very best for my son, and I knew he needed me. So I go. Love compels us, friends. This is a key that unlocks freedom and trauma. How can you, how can you be compelled by love to overcome something that has held you down. It truly is that that step into the uncomfortable, the step into a familiar place that you never care to be again. It's going and pushing into it with Jesus, friends. So that's what happened. And I didn't feel at peace. I, I felt very anxious. I felt very weak. Oh my goodness. I felt so weak and unfit, friends. I, I felt undone but I knew it's what my son needed and friends I am so grateful 24 hours later to be reporting that I found purpose and why did Jesus allow me to go into this place that I never wanted to go again friends it's because he wanted me to be on stock he wanted me to be free from that circumstance that it has no power no grip no hold no authority over me because he set me free. And friends, I believe he wants to set you free as well. So I'm making this video compelled by love. How can love compel you? The love for someone you love, the love for Jesus, the love for God that compels you to not stay stuck, to not be victimized. Friends, we're not victims, we're victors. Through the resurrection of Jesus, he defeated and left powerless everything that could defeat us, everything that could harm, hurt, or harass us. The blood of Jesus speaks of better words. And if the Son sets you free, he says, you are free indeed. And friends, I don't want you to stay stuck. I don't want you to live in the victim mentality. It is a devastating place that, that hurts, harms, and creates problems in everyone you're interacting with because the victim mentality sucks life out of you and out of everyone that you influence from that position. It's detrimental. So friends, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Will you press in with Jesus? Will you press in with the Holy Spirit? He is the helper. He is the counselor. He is the comforter, friends. We have everything we need in him. The Holy Spirit is with us, friends. Even when we don't feel it, he is working. He's moving. He wants to meet us. So friends, today, will you stay stuck or will you press in with Jesus, compelled by love, and be set free? Until next time, onwards and upwards, with grace and grit.